Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Andrew Kupser. Uh, let's see, I don't see a call sign here. He is in Tetonia, Idaho. Uh, and he has a very interesting question about an antenna that's uh, made somewhat of an appearance uh, around these days. It's called a cobweb. Uh, MFJ makes one. Uh, there's a company in Australia called 73 Antennas that makes one that I've tested. Um, the thing about them is that they're really good for places where you have very little room. What they look like is sort of a clothesline, actually. And do they work? Yes, they work. They're compromised antennas, of course, because they're not stretched out straight, but they are... Uh, brought back around on themselves uh, on a structure that nests the various bands. I'll give you a drawing in a minute. Uh, and there is one that started out with MFJ and it was uh, 20 through 10, it had five bands, and then they expanded it to have uh, uh, 30 and 40 added. And uh, what Andrew is wondering about is where is 80 meters and 60 meters. And he says, uh, those who are familiar with the multiband cobweb antennas know that there are six and seven band cobwebs out there. I haven't found an eight band. Why not nine band? Well, uh, the initial answer to that is sheer size. Uh, the 40 band is big enough. Um, in theory, could a person take a 40 through 10, add another element with a coil, meaning a trap, that would tune up on 30 and uh, 80? Uh, actually, uh, the ones that do 40 through 10 usually do have 30. Uh, that would give, I think what he means here is 60. That would give you 80, 40, and so on. Why? I have a DX Commander vertical and they use a coil to get to 80 and 30 meters. I also had an NFED halfway of 80 through 10 that used a coil to get to 80. Why not on a cobweb? Well, why not indeed? Uh, this would create sort of a hybrid antenna. Um, when I did the math for the coil on the NFED halfway, the coil came out a little too long. That's okay, just clipped a few turns. Second, it was... Uh, a Ballon config and limited power. Actually, it's an un, -un um, but everybody calls it a Ballon, a 49 to 1 Ballon. And limited power, 250 watts. That's because of the uh, toroid itself can get too hot. I'd like to get away from that as I am now using a Kenwood linear amp. Hence the statement, I had an NFED half wave, had. Uh, sounds like uh, it blew the blew the ballon in it. Um, before we jump into answering this question, I'd like to say a special thanks to Rick Sellers, who is a recent new patron for this channel. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Let's take a look at a, a cobweb antenna. A cobweb antenna has usually fiberglass type of a cross. And there is a feed point right here, usually with a piece coming out to this. And the antenna goes from there. Now yeah, let's get that right. And there's usually a little gap at the end here. Now, and then you have your other bands, which come out here too. Again, a little gap. And you can tune each band individually. So it is a fan dipole that is folded back on itself, okay? Now, this gives you a very small space antenna if you get the 20 meter one, it's not big at all, about the size of a clothesline. If you go to 40 meters, you've got way out here on the, the uh, 
on the uh, outside. Okay, and there is a, uh, a ballon here uh, just to change the coax, which is unbalanced, to the balanced antenna. Now, does this antenna work? The answer is yes, absolutely it does. Um, I have built two now, uh, one for the MFJ and one for 7.3 antennas. And I want to particularly point out 7.3 antennas because uh, they make one that you can put the whole thing together without tools. Everything either hooks into place or there's a wing nut or something like that. You can put the whole thing together. I had it up for quite a while, uh, was using it a bit, and the wind uh, pulled up a stake and the thing came over. So I folded it up, which you do just by undoing some of the wing nuts, folded it up and wrapped it up and, and put it in the garage for storage. Um, now, this is a compromise antenna. What is compromised? Now, there are different compromises that can be made in antennas. In this case, the gain of the antenna is about minus 3 dB over a dipole, dBD. Now, yeah, reference to the dipole. So we'll put the D in there. Okay about minus 3 dBd gain. Now, what he is asking is, can you put an 80 meter or a 60 meter piece on this? Now, the 40 meter ones include 30, so we don't have to worry about 30. Some people worry about 60. I don't usually, you'll find in many, most multiband antennas, that they don't cover 60. So what you would have to do, again, these are arranged, in, and if this is the 40 meter, you've got to extend it quite a ways out. And you can put an 80 meter around the outside. Each antenna is separate. Okay, these are all separate antennas, although they do tie together at the feed point. That's why I say it's fan dipole. And they've all got little gaps, so you can tune each antenna uh, individually uh, with the length of the gap. Um, and you will find that tuning one will change the tuning of the other. So there's a gap right in there. Okay, now this would be a ponderous antenna. A 80 meter dipole is 40 meters on a side or 66 feet. So the circumference here would be 66 feet. So if we divide that by four, uh, let's see, an 80 meter dipole is 40 meters long. I'm sorry. Uh, I screwed that up, didn't I? 120 feet. Okay, so it's. Uh, I'd actually be 132 feet. But if you divide that by 4, okay, 120 would be um, 4. 40 meters or uh, 120 feet on a side, which would be enormous. Now, his question is very simple. Can we do a hybrid antenna where the outer... The outer ring has some loading in it here, say here and here, and it will operate on 40 meters because of the loading, and then on 80 meters when you get down, although it would be loaded. Now this is a typical uh, dual band dipole. There's no reason that you can't add it to a fan dipole. And you would have here um, a uh, some loading that you'd have to experiment with doing toward that outer antenna would cover not only 40 but 80. Would take a significant amount of loading. Now doing that of course is a uh, a double compromise, including the compromise here. 
and what you would find is it would no longer call, cover all of 40 meters. It would cover half or maybe less, and that the bandwidth on 80 meters might be minimal, say 50 kilohertz on 80 meters. It come by no means cover the whole band. It would be much, much less. So your compromise initially with this antenna is about minus 3 dB gain over uh, the dipole. And uh, with this trapping the outer antenna, you're going to cut the bandwidth on these. You'll probably still keep the minus 3 dB gain. Okay, so can it be done? Yeah. Um, now understand that a 40 meter on this thing, 66 feet around, divided by 2 is 33, divided by 2 again is uh, 16, 16 and a half feet across. You can see this thing starts to get big. And uh, you start to have to, where the pole is, the pole comes up further, and there are uh, wires down here, or rather ropes down there, to keep the thing from collapsing. Okay, I, my MFJ1 got killed by a deer. Uh, there, were, uh, there were three guys. Here's the mast for the antenna. There were one, two, three guys. And the deer ran right like this, up over the, this was in the middle of the night, up over the stake, up this way, like this. And I can't imagine what this felt like on the deer's belly. But it really pulled hard. It finally pulled this stake out of the ground. The whole antenna collapsed this way, and the deer ran straight through it trashed it. So this one, I'm sorry, ended up going in the, in the uh, garbage. It was just so badly trashed. Broken wires, broken stays, broken everything. So if you don't have that problem, you're in, in good luck. So far, I've not had a deer do that to other antennas. Okay, so, um, so, Andrew, the answer is, is absolutely is possible. It makes it a hybrid antenna, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're taking one of the elements and making it do double duty for 40 and 80. Now, the compromise there is that it will cut the bandwidth on both bands. The compromise for the antenna as a whole is about a 3 dB loss over a regular dipole. Now, is this an antenna worth having? Yes, absolutely, because it solves a space problem. And it looks, you know, to somebody just driving by, like some giant uh, clothesline in the sky called the cobweb antenna. Now, uh, you can certainly experiment with this and see if you can get it to work. I don't think you want to exceed the footprint of a 40-meter um, cobweb, because it, it's quite large to begin with. So you want to use that outer line, which is 40 meters, and um, put loading in the right places so it will cover both 40 and 80. That means you have to do it without extending the antenna. Okay, so that means loading uh, in, in some different places. It can be done. Uh, will take you a little bit of work. So Andrew, there you go. I hope that answers your question. Let me know how it works out if you give this a try. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.